The entire team at Emsolation want to acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We want to recognise that we are recording and telling our stories on the stolen land of our country's first storytellers. We wish to pay our respects to all Wurundjeri elders and ancestors and to extend that respect to any First Nations peoples who listen to Emsolation. We recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples' continued connection to the land and waters of this country and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. Always was, always will be. In I just feel like Harry had the energy of someone who gave himself a pep talk in the dunny before he head out there to the vultures. And Michael Lucas. I think in this one 40 second thing I was shamed for not <laughs> posting and then shamed for posting. It's a roller coaster to keep up. This is Emsolation. Amanita Mascaria is the name. Sounds like a drag queen. You're in Emsolation. Well, hello there and welcome. Welcome to the first independent episode of M Salation. If you are returning home, if you are here because when we left for Spotify, you could not, you could, simply could not join us. But now that we are back out in the wild, welcome home. Ah, oh, it's good to see you. I've missed you. What's been going on? Today's episode is truly, look, she's free. She's not wearing a bra. It's unhinged. We talk coronation. We talk my latest hyperfixation, which is mushrooms. We talk about Shakira, Shakira and Tom Cruise. I wrote some on-the-spot fan fiction. Michael has some TV show recommendations. You're getting a bit of everything today, as always. But how are you? Now, if you're listening on the Thursday, the day that we come out... It is almost Mother's Day. Everybody knows a mother or some of you are mothers. And it is a day of, look, it's good for some people, it's triggering for others. And I guess like I have been saying for the last little while, I feel like Mother's Day can be a day to celebrate anybody who is a mother-like figure in your life. And that could be a drag queen. It could be, I don't know, the lady who does your Brazilian waxing. Anybody who makes you feel like you've got a bosom to snuggle into, a metaphorical bosom. And if your mother is no longer with us, I really encourage you to do something on on Sunday that celebrates her. What was her favourite TV show, her favourite drink, her favourite meal, her favourite smell, her favourite activity. Do something that brings you closer to her. If it is a hard day for you and none of the things I've suggested cut it, then ignore it. It's fine. I mean, it's hard to ignore because it's everywhere. But look, I see you. That's okay too. Hey, I want to thank everybody who has become a subscriber at Emsolation Extra. We're sitting at about 2,000, which is awesome, but not enough. My goal is double that. Obviously, that's what we've worked out. We need to keep Emsolation alive and afloat, but halfway is fantastic. Next week, our first episode is hitting all subscribers, and look, it's a doozy. My husband and I sat down. Woo! We went there. We went everywhere. Do we need to get in the questions now? No. No. Just let me steer the ship, dickhead. <laughs> so I'm not trying to argue with you because you, what you've presented is a lot better than what I've presented, which is nothing. I don't think you actually realise how much of my week is dedicated to making sure the house is clean for the four of you. What pisses me off when you do that is not what. Yeah, it's how. how. Every yeah. time. It's like, oh, fuck off. You're right there. How are you feeling within your body right now? Um, I don't know. I don't know how to put it into words. We both left feeling a bit shell-shocked. Several edits have had to be made as we've listened back and sometimes, oh, that was a bit harsh, take that out. (laughs) But it is my great hope you all sit and listen and perhaps it normalises tough conversations between, you know, people who have been in long-term relationships and people who are married or whatnot. And if you're single and you're listening, it's just like, you know, grab the popcorn is what I'm saying. I hope you enjoy that. That is coming out Tuesday. And then our first AMA with Michael and I will come out the following Thursday for subscribers. Please think about taking up the Emsolation Extra experience. I know I bang on about it. I feel very self-conscious about it, but I'm really trying to build something that hasn't been done before and certainly not in this country. I want to be able to make all the things for you, TV shows, records, 
I don't know, live events. I just want Down the Hill to become a massive player in the in the media landscape of Australia. And to do that, I need you all to back us. And lots of you are, and I thank you for that. All right, I'll get to the episode. Oh, look, I don't know what it was. Just the, the whiff of freedom for me set something off. <laughs> so strap in is what I'm trying to say. Welcome home if this is your first step back in a couple years. Thanks for finding us. If you are only listening on Spotify, whatever the case may be, I'll have you. You're welcome. I see you. Play the music. Luciano and Michael Lucas. This is Emsolation. Michael Lucas, welcome as our royal correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the irony. Hasn't the worm turned? It really has. Mm-hmm. I had plans to watch the coronation and then when I sat down to do it, I realised I just didn't give a fuck. You actually invited me over I to did. watch the coronation. If it wasn't for a family wedding, I probably would have taken you up on it. Uh, me. I would have sat with you and Adrian and watched it and drunk gin. Like that yes. would have been fun. But Ironically. Sitting it by, like I was going to have to watch it by myself and then I was like, ooh. Really not one person in your family had any interest. I know. Is that really shocking you at this point in time? No. And every time I go near the television, I have to fight off my four-year-old who's playing Super Super Mario Mario. Brothers. Mm. It's insane. (laughs) He wakes up talking about it. He goes to sleep talking about it. He's become friends with a guy who works at EB Games. Mm. And Elio just goes now and we swap his games over after he's played them for a few weeks. Mm. And they sit there and have in-depth discussions about what Elio wants next. He is four. Mm. This guy is like 45 Mm. and they are so mates, mm. truly. Elio references this dude at EB Games like it's a parent. <laughs> oh, yeah, Chris said this, Chris said that. I'm like, I'm fine, like who's Chris? EB Games. <laughs> and last night I turned it off because he, like, he'd been playing it for an hour and like, he threw himself on the ground and he was crying and they looked up at me and he said, am I dramatic? <laughs> like, what? And he said, Chella said I was dramatic. Is this dramatic? Dramatic. And so Chella came running in. I'm like, what have you been saying to him? She said, I told him he's dramatic. I'm like, oh, my God. So now Elio is obsessed and thinks that he's dramatic and that he's got another parent from EB Games called Chris. (laughs) Can I just say that I feel like these traits that you're mentioning they're not entirely surprising to me. How dare you? (laughs) How how dare you, sir? And look... I know you don't actually throw yourself on the floor and scream, am I dramatic? But I feel like you want to at times. (laughs) It's not an insult. Get back to the coronation, you colonialism loving. Can I just say the consistency with which I've been anti-monarchy throughout the years of this podcast? I don't recall that. Long before Black Lives Matter. Sorry, what? Absolutely. Anyway. Yet you watched. I watched the highlights on YouTube. Can we talk about... There's a highlights on YouTube. Mm. There's, oh, there's plenty of things that cut it down to just the five-minute highlights. Oh, because it was so long, wasn't it? Was, it? it was a very it's long. ridiculous. Yes. I did see pictures of Julie Bishop. These are yes. the things that came in through unintentional osmosis. Okay. Saw, saw Julie Bishop. Yep. Why was she there? She holds no official position in the Australian government whatsoever. She works at a university in... She has some relationship with the Prince's Trust or something like that. She was there in that capacity. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I did wonder. Oh, look, I am a correspondent. How do I know that? But that's that's the case. The frock, not that it matters, wasn't a fan of. Reminiscent of Nicole Kidman's Met Gala vibe, just with a higher neck. I see. And the hat was sperm-esque. And without the pop cultural resonance. <laughs> a sperm-esque hat is a bit of a royal tradition if Correct. one thinks back. Not out of place. You go to a milliner and you say mm. to them, I'm off to a royal event, they'll get their semen stencil out. <laughs> <laughs> what else penetrated your little... <laughs> Katy Perry. Of looking, course. C- couldn't find her seat wearing that big purple disc hat and yeah. just wandering around like a clueless American. Yeah. She was on brand for me. Absolutely. Katy Perry gave everything I wanted from Katy Perry at the coronation. Yeah. Truly. I feel 
Yes, she turned it into a win. Uh, fr- from the outset, because it was so well publicised that Ed Sheeran, no. Uh, Adele, no. Harry Styles, no. And it is a bit of a mark of Katy Perry's... Li- I'm not going to say her Nicole fall Schuslinger, from Nicole Schuslinger, was the cat dolls? Yes, but... Yeah, she was let's there. Let's just call it. They're the hit makers of the 2000s. <gasps> Maybe in Katy Perry's case she went in 2010, but... It's been a while. She's Linga can sing. Bitch can she sing. She can. She can lay it down, and I man. I actually thought Katy Perry's vocal performance was one of her better. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty I mean, good. she's obviously all those dates in Vegas have really strengthened <laughs> the pipes. And the gold alfoil dress, liquid metal, looked great. Quite enjoyed it. Yeah, same. Mm. Great. What else? <laughs> Is that all that you found? What about what 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 about Kate Middleton? Surely she penned Surely that picture of her Kate turning Middleton. to camera. Yeah, yeah, serving, serving everything I want in future queen. Mm, I mm. really thought that she. I felt like she was probably the only one that gave powerful female a coronation energy. That's right. Didn't say a word. <laughs> 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 Which is the quality that we always enjoyed in Queen Elizabeth. It's true. It's true. The weirdest thing about a coronation is obviously we've never had one in our no. lives. God, no. And most people alive today have never seen one. And as a royal event goes, when you sit down and watch it, or in my case, watch the five minutes, it, <laughs> I mean, at least with a royal wedding, it's glamorous and it's something that we can sort of relate to in our own lives because we've all been to weddings. But a coronation mm-hmm. is so displaced from so anything. And also... Like, sometimes I get people saying, oh, I like the pageantry and it's nostalgic and it's continuity and it's a bit of glamour and I like it. But when it's like a really old man Mm. in this weird quasi-religious ceremony, Mm. it's like it boils down to nothing but weird costumes that sort of look like a a bit like Frozen on Broadway but not as exciting, (laughs) not as colourful. And it's just baldly like, yeah, this is about hereditary transfer of power and, like, <laughs> remember how we love that idea of separation of church and state? Forget it! Oh, but only that. He didn't learn his lines. He didn't? No, they That's were reading off their little cue cards. Come on. How long years. have you had? How long 70? have you had? Your entire life has been building to this Plenty moment. lines. Exactly. God damn it. My daughter learned an entire 45-minute two-hander play in a month. That's right. I... Yes. Couldn't learn five lines, Charlie. I know, I know. And he got grumpy. I did see the article where a lip reader saw he was getting very grumpy can in the we, carriage. Can I pause you on that? Mm. This, if you're a lip reader, right, mm. this, I was just laughing to myself thinking about the Lip Readers Association and the Lip Readers Guild and, like, the Lip, the lip oh. Readers Union. These are one of those occasions where it's like the fuck, it's their Olympics. Oh, absolutely. Every lip reader in the in the known and unknown universe would have been called upon mm. and and given a specific royal to watch. Mm, mm. And if I was a lip reader, I would make up the most fucking weirdest shit because who's <laughs> going to dispute you? <laughs> well, potentially another lip reader. That'd be a good show, Lip Reader Wars. <gasps> I love Lip Reader Wars. <laughs> Trade market. But I was just laughing. There were so many articles that referenced lip readers. Like it was a credible thing. Mm, like mm. it's like a lip reader is like, oh, where did you hear that information? Oh, a lip reader saw it. Ah, fine. It's fact. It's an excellent <laughs> clickbait as evidenced by the fact that I myself clicked on it. But and- what else does a lip reader do when there isn't a royal event? Like, what does a lip reader do for the rest of the year to pay the bills? <laughs> what is the lip reader's job in everyday life? I kept thinking, like, I went down a whole spiral of... If yes. you're a lip reader and there isn't a royal event on, what do you do? <laughs> I don't know. Do you just walk around, like, giving people unsolicited lip reading shit? Like, oh, that person <laughs> just said that shit about you. Like, do you just sidle up and cause drama? I went straight to, do you have some sort of, like, position in the legal fraternity or the police or something like that? <laughs> I don't know. I, if there are any lip readers in the M Salation community, please write in and tell us how do you make ends meet. Yes. I, as I recall, you weren't included in the federal budget. <laughs> What is the service you really provide? That's so true. But also it could be, you know, obviously, uh, 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 you know, in, in the hearing impaired and deaf community, people have to learn to lip read. So are they just people that have had to learn it for their own lives? Oh. That could be it. I mean, I don't know. It's just an an acquired skill. Yeah. That's even cooler. So maybe they're watching it not even realising that the people aren't mic'd in that situation. I don't know. Oh, yeah. So uh, people who are deaf or hard of hearing... Do they lend themselves as lip readers? Possibly. Like, do people who are um, who aren't hard of hearing do they learn it yes. as a skill? Is my question. Yes. Not an incidental skill or an acquired skill out of necessity. Is it something you've chosen to learn? Yes. Yes. I mean that is a hell of a choice. It is a hell of a choice, <laughs> but. Congratulations yeah. for your efforts on Great. Sunday. And you really came through with the goods. <laughs> yeah, and again, you really I did. would look at someone's mouth and be like, "Yeah, he said 
fuck that bitch and the horse she rode in on. <laughs> this uniform is chafing me. I think I'm getting a rash. I would be doing that shit. <laughs> oh, no, we definitely said she looks awful. Yeah, yeah, mutton dressed as lamb. She looks terrible. Yeah, oh, no, and she smells. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I would do, <laughs> just for shits and giggles. So what else? What else in the coronation? Well, I mean, as you well know, probably Harry flew in and flew out, didn't go to the lunch, just... And put on a show. Jeez, it looks like I did take in quite a bit, huh? You really did. <laughs> Look, it was hard not to absorb it. And he sat behind Margaret, mm. who was had some sort of military attire Feathered on and had hat. an enormous hat, which people read as some sort of thing against him. But actually... No. You know, no. They love each other. They love each other. They showed her chatting to him and it seemed to be very... Uh, yeah, but I saw a picture, as lip, lip readers assured me, I saw a picture of Harry seeing her arrive mm. and he looked so, like, happy and the warmth and, like, this is my kooky old aunt who, mm. you know, is maybe a bit inappropriate and loves a sherry on a Sunday. Mm. Like, that was the vibes mm. I got from that whole exchange. But he, he was always smiling. It was his son's birthday. Was that a deliberate ploy by no. the palace? I don't, apparently not. Apparently just a coincidence. Although the palace failed to issue a message for uh, his son, <gasps> which is traditionally what they've done every other time. No happy birthday for Archie. No. Oh, rude. Rude. How d- <laughs> <laughs> well, they had a few things on. I can't. I cannot believe I'm defending them. I'm not defending them. <laughs> Princess Margaret did come and do a full sit-down interview in the days leading up to it where she chatted and chatted and chatted. Did you see that? Mm, there was some interesting takeaways. Interesting, mm, interesting, mm. yeah. They, and to the interviewer's credit, it started very, you know, softball. It started very much like you must be missing your mother, what was that like, and mm. lulled her in and then hit her with, what's the relevance of the monarchy? And then finally pressing her on, and yeah, and the monarchy's ties to, to slavery. Let's mm. talk about that. How do you feel about that? And Margaret, I don't know. I, I, I don't think she did very well. She ended up basically saying... I don't want to talk about slavery in historical sense. I don't think we should be attaching it to a time frame because do you think it doesn't happen today? Come on. Of course it does. It's like, what are you talking about, Margaret? What? <laughs> okay, mate. So, yeah, Harry looked great. Harry looked confident. He left as soon as humanly possible. Yes. So I felt like Harry was the winner out of that situation. I think he came, it came across okay for him. Well, you would think he gave people very few reasons to criticise him, but they managed. But they it managed. had the vibes of ex-wife being invited to ex-husband's new wedding mm. because the kids wanted her there and she's turned up looking great, smiling at everyone, not giving anything away. But also before she got there would have been in the mirror in the ensuite of her, of her, her hotel face. room like, fucking smile, bitch, don't give him anything, don't give him an inch, don't crack, you've got this, you're a strong, powerful woman, nothing's going to get you today, nothing's going to, no one's going to know, the lip readers don't have a, like, no chance. <laughs> I feel like you've lived this experience, even though I know intellectually you haven't. <laughs> I Spiritually, just know. you are an ex-wife showing up at your... That is how you face the world. <laughs> I just feel like Harry had the energy of someone who gave himself a pep talk in the dunny before he head out there to the yeah. vultures. Yeah. And nailed it. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, well done. Yeah, it was cool. How did you feel about Camilla? <laughs> I mean, firstly, it is pretty astonishing. If you went back in time to the late 80s and said you wouldn't read about this, Camilla... Camilla. Is the queen. She will become the queen. Wild. She will get there. Queen consort. I think that's the official term. I am confused about that because we all remember the time. And again, perhaps this shows my shortcomings as a royal expert. <laughs> but I remember Queen Elizabeth coming out going, she will be known as Queen Consort, something like that. Yeah. But then it seemed like they just put it on a, put the crown on her head and all of a sudden she was queen. Well, as has been written many times over, it is... A lesson of strength and courage and longevity for all side hosts. <laughs> you know, like this woman had the longest game of anyone I've ever encountered in my life. <laughs> <laughs> the most riveting moment for me, and this is, speaks to how intensely boring the whole ceremony was at the five minutes I watched of it. I was that bored. They put the crown on her head, but they sort of squashed her fringe oh, in dear. an uncovered. And so you could see her sitting in the like, amazing chair of destiny or whatever it is. <laughs> chair and of destiny. Subtly, yeah, that's an official royal term, <laughs> yes. all right? And then... Hi, gay. <laughs> and then she's just really trying to, like, quickly get the fringe, put it around, put it around, put it around, and then she does and she settles. She gets that fringe in place, thank God. But you know... That. Do you see that? That you is an example it. of 
Camilla's tenacity. That's right. Most people wouldn't touch the fucking billion dollar thing on their head that they're barely supporting <laughs> with their neck. But that bitch was going to have the hair up. She was. She didn't care. She didn't care what was in her way. She literally was shoving her hair <laughs> under this crown with blood diamonds in it that's been in the family for how many years? Oh, that's right. Like, but no, she was going to have good hair. I still imagine that the very second, she's very camera conscious, I think, Camilla, and the very second she was off camera, she would be like, get this fucking crown on my head and fix my fucking fringe. I hope she was. I hope she did. She never gives up. She never gives up. She was on that balcony waving at the end. She, if there, if anyone looks up a picture of just endurance, You'll I want to see. see one fucking London marathon runner. I just want a picture of Camilla Parker Bowles. Okay, <laughs> she forever is the picture of endurance. She should be spoken about in like before astronauts go to space. They should tell the story of Queen Camilla Consort. I I Consort get it, Queen. but isn't it just a lesson? <laughs> like, is it endurance or is it is like? Shut up, yeah. stay home, don't say anything, get your hair blow-dried and eventually people will just uh, stop being angry. Who's queen now, dickhead? <laughs> well, I'm not saying it's a bad strategy. It's not a good one. I'm just saying, you know, if we're talking about endurance, it's not like she's walked the Kokoda Trail, okay? <laughs> she sat in the castle and shut up. Her version of? <laughs> oh, God. But I don't know, they're both, they're so old and not very inspiring. Well, they are. Yeah. And... And I can they really continue that much longer? I mean, the thing that shocked me was the polling showing that almost half of the Brits now are questioning whether they want... So, I mean, it's going to be pretty fucking embarrassing for us if they turf them out before we do. <laughs> oh, <imagine. laughs> All right, well, there's our wrap-up. Of Le Cotonation. <laughs> I want to talk about mushrooms. Yes. Uh, where this is. Yes! <laughs> oh... It's an M Salation special investigation <laughs> into mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms, I love the mushrooms. I love the mushrooms. I love the mushrooms. I love them. Okay. Oh my god. So, I can't believe it. it's just gonna be amazing at next year's Walkleys <laughs> when they're like when you get two nominations. Will it be <laughs> the fitness swinging dick video or the searing investigation into mushrooms? I also love that you have historically wrenched your <laughs> podcast free of your corporate overlords that were all oh, wonderful. <laughs> and finally, the chance to dive into the material that you want. And what are we starting with? Mushrooms. Okay, convince me. <laughs> Sell me. It's true. Spot the first week of independence where I'm doing whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> and welcome if you're back again on Apple and Google Play and a lot of you are listening in for the first time and what a reintroduction to the world of insulation. <laughs> Mushrooms are fascinating. I wrote a report for you. Great. Mushrooms are fascinating for a lot of reasons, okay? First of all, their appearance. Mushrooms come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and also new species are being developed all the fucking time. Not mm. developed, discovered and mm. found, okay? Um, also, mushrooms play a critical role in all the ecosystems. They break down dead plant and animal material and convert it into nutrients that can be used by other organisms. They have medicinal properties and there are, like I said, 10,000 known species and also fairies live in them and also... I am obsessed with going to search for them. It's all I can think about. I go out with a bucket and the dogs so I don't look sus. Okay, so we need to talk about this. But can you just give me sort of a sense of a timeline of when this developed in you? Because I feel like I was just sitting here living my life unaware of your passion for mushrooms and then all of a sudden in the past week it's like... Oh, yeah, no, it, it re- oh, it's such a me thing. I also want to remind you, I wrote this, some mushrooms form symbiotic relationships with the trees and plants and they, they deliver nutrients through. And, like, the, the un- underneath mushrooms, the whole, like, say, of a forest floor is covered it, 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 with their, their little roots. Can, Maya, can, what's Oh, the- look, can I just say, so, okay, side quest, and I have to cut in here. For so long, oh. I was trying to get you to watch The Last of Us. You do realise The Last of Us is all about fucking mushrooms. That it, they're not zombies. Yes, it's a form of like mushroom spore, and they're all communicating with each other under the ground. The whole show. Mycelium. Is, it's called mycelium. Yes. Whatever it is, well, watch it. It's it's like a a complete global disaster oh, okay. triggered by mushrooms okay. infecting humans and people turning into mushroom people. That's what? what it is. It's not zombies. <gasps> it's not. They're mushrooms. I mean, they basically act like zombies, but they look like mushrooms. They act like mushrooms. And I okay. bet now that I've said that, you I'm, will have I'm watched gonna. every single episode I'm by gonna. this time tomorrow. I'm going to. last. So, like, last year I watched this marvellous mushrooms documentary on Netflix. Oh, hi. It's just M dropping into correct M. It's not magic, marvellous mushrooms or whatever I just said. It's actually fantastic 
fungi. But I, I think I physically block that out because Americans say fungi and that is just not okay. It hurts my teeth when I say it. Say it. Fungi. Nope. Nope. No, thank you, ma'am. Nope. Do not want. Send it back to the chef in the kitchen. There's a hair in my soup. So the the show that I'm referring to is called Fantastic Fungi. <laughs> Fungi. <laughs> but I kept calling it Marvelous Mushrooms, Mrs. Maisel, or whatever. But yeah, if you want to watch it, highly recommend Netflix. Fantastic Fungi. <laughs> Okay, back to me. And it was so great. It was. I think we spoke about it briefly. It was full of nerds nerding out. My mission is to discover the language of nature, and I believe nature is intelligent. There is a world under the earth full of magic and mystery. It holds the consciousness of nature's connection to all living things. You know, these mushrooms, they can heal you, they can feed you, they can kill you. It's not like a vegetable, and it's not like an animal, but it's somewhere in between. They support life, they convert life. As you're walking through, it's about 300 miles of fungi. Under every footstep that you take, and that's all over the world. And they've got this whole community, and they go mushroom picking together, mm. and they talk about the beautiful relationship, the mushroom, and like mushrooms were the first. Mushrooms, literally the first organism, like they're centuries, centuries old. They predate humans, they predate dinosaurs. Mushrooms are the fucking shit, right? Really? Mm. Yes. And so I kind of got into it and was looking around, but then I lost interest because we were in the pandemic and I couldn't really go out because at that time we were deep pandemic and mm. we weren't really allowed to like walk around. We were afraid we were going to get COVID from like the mailman basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I was out walking with Elio a couple of weeks ago and I came across a big, the big traditional red with the white, you know, the Smurfs lived in them. Yes, I did think of Smurfs. Super Mario. Mm -hmm. And they are called the Avar... Hang on, wait, I want to get the right name. Wait, red... Oh, hang on, sorry, wait. Um, red mushroom fly... Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. So, right, this one, see? Yes. Yes, and they the are the... Picturesque and also fairy tale esque mushrooms. Amanita muscaria is the name. Okay, so I sounds found... like a drag queen. <laughs> totally, that's what I thought. There is a whole community of people who love this Amanita muscaria brand. So, like, not only do they love mushrooms, they're sluts for this one. Okay, like totally, they're like this is their number one shroom. They've got this <laughs> one woman called the Amanita Lover and the Amanita Dreamer, and she tells you because this mushroom, unbeknownst to me, and I didn't know, has psychedelic properties, right? Is and this like a mushroom version of Stan Wars? Kind of. Like, it's like Swifties <laughs> versus Stylus. Yes, <laughs> different mushrooms have groupies. Okay, shroomies. <laughs> I just made that up. That's good, huh? No, that is pretty good. Yeah. So I've, I discovered one of these. And it was huge near our house, and then I was like, this is amazing. Mm. So then I went. And downloaded an app. It's a mushroom identifying app. Oh, my mm. God, a whole new world. So now all I want to do every day is go out mushroom hunting. But then I got sent all these messages because I put this, I put the picture of this mushroom online and I got like 200 people going, M, that's actually like a psychedelic mushroom. Like, be careful. If you pick that and the cops bust you, then you're committing a felony. And I'm like, oh, my Whoa. God, what if I accidentally pick a magic mushroom and the cops stop me? What's my cover story? So then every time I go <laughs> mushroom picking, I have anxiety that I'm going to be arrested for accidentally picking a class A drug. I want to let you know that I would pay whatever it takes to bail you out. And also, I do think if that was finally what got you arrested, <laughs> I think it would be so fitting and so fabulous. And I can't wait to see how the Daily Mail would report it. So every time I leave the house, I get my cover story covered. Like, you know, I'm like, oh, my son loves mushrooms and he's my mushroom identifier. And let me tell you about the mushroom identifier. The mushroom identifier has been set up by a hysterical Italian mother because every single mushroom I try and identify, it's deadly, deadly, don't touch it, don't pick it up. It's not. Oh, okay. It's not. It, but it never tells you that this is a magic mushroom because it doesn't want to get in trouble. Right. I think it thinks the cops might be onto it as well. So, right. like, I, you've got to take a picture of the side of the mushroom, the top of the mushroom and the underneath of the mushroom, right? And every time I do that, every mushroom I pick, no matter what, it says, deadly, danger, <laughs> danger, do not touch, you will die. But you still touch? I do. Oh, wow. So I picked a bunch of mushrooms and I've been identifying them and it's all I can think about. It's all I want to do on Mother's Day this Sunday. I've requested a mushroom hunt from my family. We're going to go to Mount Martha or Mount Macedon, one of the mounts, I can't remember, and apparently it is like mushroom rich. And now every time it rains, I'm like... Yes, it's raining because rain is optimal for mushroom growth. They right. fucking love it. Okay. So in Melbourne, it has been nonstop rain. And so yeah. every morning I wake up and I say to the family, oh, there'll be a shit ton of mushrooms this weekend. <laughs> I love it. I just love the whole idea of like, it's like a treasure hunt. Every time I leave the house now, and there are mushrooms everywhere. I'm spotting them like dimes. And is I, mean, I had mushroom really... blindness up until this point. Wow, now okay. I'm mushroom sensitive. Okay, well, you I will think be I... too. 
Really? You'll start seeing them. Really? Odie. I drove Odie to school the other day and she told me, come and I'll show you I found mushrooms on a tree. It's engaging my family. It's bringing my family together. Wow. It's nothing mushrooms can't do. It's kind of like Pokemon, but you yes. just applied it to... Is Elio as into it as, say, Mario? Or will is he no. happy to set aside Mario for Mushroom Hunting? No, he hunting? hates it. It says it's boring. I can't imagine why. <laughs> I mean... But no, it's... I would consent to you taking me out to show me some mushrooms. Can we? Not right now. Do you want to join a mushroom group? I was considering joining a group. That feels like a commitment. No, like we meet... Other mushroom enthusiasts, can you imagine the characters? Can you, it'd yeah. be worth it, content. Yeah. We'll join a hunt yeah. and we all go around with our baskets. But I'm the other thing in the mushroom community, if you find a particularly rare mushroom, like say a ghost mushroom, you do not reveal the locale. You do not give away where the good mushrooms are. But what, why? Don't people you... might pick them, people might destroy them. And also if you find a rare mushroom, don't pick it. Or if you have to pick it, you have to sprinkle some of the spores around so that more grow. So you're literally just... Going, seeing the mushroom, finding it, photographing it and leaving it be. Sometimes I pick them if they look close to the end. And when I do pick them, I spread the shit around so more grows. Yeah. But it is an unspoken rule in the mushroom world that you do not reveal locations of good mushroom crops. Wow. Keep it to yourself or your close mushroom pals. Wow. <laughs> do you actually have close mushroom pals? Not as of yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, your first recruitment drive is, it's actually not going too bad. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm putting on the gum boots and oh, saying yeah. let's get to the car. Got to wear gum boots for of sure. Of course, well, yes. especially for going out after rain. I'm really excited. Okay, wow. so I'll keep you updated. It's going to be a beautiful day on Sunday as well. It's perfect sun and and the moisture, but they mm. mushrooms grow underneath trees. They grow underneath mm. things. They like the moist, dark, kind of murky, musty situation. Not out in the open. They don't like that. I think you relate to them on a spiritual level I do. in a way. I do. <laughs> hey, you know what else I relate to on a spiritual level? Breaking news. Tom Cruise and Shakira are totally dating. <gasps> em broke this news to me. <laughs> and that's oh, no, I no, disagree. No, Tom Cruise. Her is Tom Cruise. Okay, all right, thank God. No, no, no. She, Tom Cruise okay. is her. Tom yeah. Cruise, good for her, good for Tom Cruise. Yeah. Not good for Shakira. No. There's a whole bunch of, like, there is a parade of red flags. Like, she's looking out the window and it's just red flag central, but she's like, oh, no, it's, it's carnival. <laughs> no, mm, it's mm, all the red flags mm, about Tom Cruise. Mm. But they're still dating. <sighs> okay. God, this Provide is your evidence because I must have been on the face of it. I'm skeptical. I believe they've been photographed together. They've been but... photographed. Pashing. Pashing. Demois really? is my source, as always. Never wrong. The Bible. Yeah. Never wrong. Uh, so the Miami Grand Prix happened over the weekend, and the Miami Grand Prix is the most over the top, seedy, glitzy, gaudy, like. Vin Diesel's the mayor of it. Are you saying like in the world of Grand Prix, there's a spectrum of 100%. how CD and Gordy it is? Oh my God. So what's, what's, what's the Melbourne Grand Prix? Is Melbourne like? Grand Prix is the kind of really wholesome family, salt of the earth version. Okay, okay. Then you've got, say, you've got your Las Vegas one, your Miami one, which are quite flashy. glitzy, yeah, glammy, mm. flat, flashy. You've got, um, oh, God. My brain is not functioning because I'm still back with my mushrooms. mushrooms. Well, I'm going to say the way you're describing it was taking me back to the mushroom <laughs> varieties. <laughs> but, yeah, every single Grand Prix track and event has its own personality and vibe. Okay. And Miami is everything. Trash. Yeah, everything you want from Miami. Like it's, yeah. it's the Fast and the Furious but on the track with I was going to say it's Gloria Stefan. That's what I think of with Miami. But Shakira is like the next best thing. Totally. So they were seen, first I was seen chatting, then there's grainy footage of them pashing. Apparently Tom went straight in. Uh, a whole bunch of sources have said that he's very interested in pursuing her. He's 60, she's 46. He's five foot eight and she's like five foot four. So like the height thing's working mm-hmm. and like it's all apparently on. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, I really don't know how I feel about it. Why? Because of Scientology. I know, but to me, Shakira's coming out of a decade-long marriage Mm -hmm. and it ended very badly and Mm. I just feel like Tom Cruise is the ultimate kind of rebound guy because he would be so enthusiastic in bed. (laughs) Do you think? I think I do. It might have been a while between drinks. I don't know. I feel like... He'd be grateful at this point. I think so. Yes, I do understand that. Yeah, I still feel like Shakira wouldn't buy into Scientology. You, but I think she's, her taste in men, I'm questioning though. <laughs> I feel like I'm not sure that the, as the evidence has laid out by you is giving me much faith. 
Well, I panicked and I didn't have a fan fiction prepared. Oh, thank God one came through at the last minute. So what I've been able to do, because I only found out five minutes before we recorded. Oh, my God. Like it was truly breaking news. And I'm like, well, I've got to write a fan fiction. So what I've been able to write is a very short, and my imaginings of the exact moment... They came together. <laughs> Why? I'm just laughing. I obviously, I write a show where breaking news stories is, and I just love the notion. I want you as a character in there. Breaking news hitting you going, I've got to prepare the fan fiction. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> you do write a show called The News Reader and I understand that the different types of breaking news and the levels and standards of what is and isn't. That's right. Is and, but, <laughs> and also, who, yeah, who is to judge how people react and interpret breaking news? Some people yeah. just go straight to headlines. Other people go straight to the fan, fan fiction. fiction. Yeah. Because instantly I'm like, when I read Shakira and Tom Cruise got together at the Miami Grand Prix, the first thing I think of what the... Well, how? Tell me. Give me information exactly. right now. So then I'm like, fan fiction. And also for you, in this case, you have with both of them, particularly him, decades of content to draw on. Totally. These are people we have lived and grown oh up with. Oh, God. All right, I'm going to... Ben, can you print my fan fiction, please? You're not going to leave this in, are you? What? You're not going to leave this bit in, are you? Yeah. <laughs> not this long, though. Like, through the magic of podcasting, Zeke will edit this down to, like, two seconds. Oh, and we're back. Okay, we have the script in our hand. We do. All right, so you're going to be, do you want to be Vin Diesel and Tom Cruise and I'll be Shakira and the narrator? Jesus. How do I do, I think Vin's got a deeper voice. Yeah. 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 Okay, here we go. The atmosphere was electric at the Miami Grand Prix. Now, please remember, I only had five minutes to write this and it's only the start of the fanfic. <clears throat> The atmosphere was electric at the Miami Grand Prix. You could smell the sweaty tos- testosterone-tinged musky vibes everywhere. Neon-coloured bum bags on the hard-bodied and waxed tanned men and women could be seen everywhere. The unofficial mayor of Miami, a.k.a. Vin Diesel, was wandering around the circuit, leaving a cloud of cool water by Davidoff in his wake. He never strayed from that classic scent. He thought it made him smell like a sexy dolphin. Vin spots a familiar face in the crowd. Tom Cruise. He yells across pit lane. Tom's face breaks into a wide grin. He jogs over to Vin to greet him. (laughs) The two of them high-five in an unnecessarily enthusiastic manner, as though the size of their respective penises would be measured by the veracity of their palms meeting. Vin, how's it going, man? Tom asks. Fantastic, bro. We're just wrapping filming on site in the Fury. On Fast and the Furious. On... uh, Sorry, start again. (laughs) Sorry. We just wrapped filming on Fast and the Furious 957. This is going to be the one to get us the Oscars, I reckon. Sure thing, bro. As you probably know, the Top Gun sequel is inexplicably nominated for quite a few Oscars. I'm personally ashamed of the film, but for some reason the patriarchy and their need for nostalgia elevated this mediocre at best film to the highest level. I didn't even go. I'm told we won. Tom told Vin. Cool story, bro. Hey, there's someone I want you to meet. As Vin said that, a stunning, tiny vision with long, curly, mermaid-like hair stepped into Tom's view. Hello, Tom Cruise. My name is Shakira. And it's lucky that my breasts are small and humble so you don't confuse them for mountains. But you must never fear because... uh, My hips... How does that song go? My hips don't lie? Oh, God. My hips don't lie. Um, um... Fuck. Oh, fuck. Look it up. Fuck. Wait, 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 wait. Um, you got it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> oh, wait, is that is that the same song? Is Hips Don't Lie and Breasts no, Are Humble the same that's song? that's Everything Everywhere. Don't talk like that. You You'll make, make a woman go mad. mad. You know, what's the hook of this song? Right. We're fine. You know how's in my body. I know tonight, you know my hips, hips don't Okay, 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 got it, got it. Here we go. <coughs> that was worth it. Hello, Tom Cruise. My name is Shakira, Shakira. And it's lucky that my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. But you must never fear. Oh, tonight, because my hips don't lie, and I'm starting to feel you right. For once in his life, Tom found himself lost for words. Shakira was even more beautiful in person than he'd ever imagined. Tom, bro, this is Shakira, the pop star. I know who she is, bro. I was just momentarily lost for words. I didn't expect to meet a mermaid goddess at the Ma- Miami Grand Prix. Tom gushed. Tom Cruise, you flatter me. I think we should go on a date. To be continued. That's all I could get. Oh, wow. I... 
I just want to give special attention to the fact that I think part of what made that so magical for me was that M had spelled pit as in like a pit as in what happens at a race course. She spelled it like Brad Pitt. P-I-T-T. I really appreciated it. Capital P. Beautiful. He was there too. All right, mate. All right. Well, uh, before we go... Somebody wants to give themselves a, a plug. plug. Yeah. What's going on? Come on. Well, actually, I'm going to be generous and not just plug myself. Oh, wow. You didn't bother plugging the Emsolation Extra on your Instagram till I sent you a terse message to do so. <laughs> it's not true. I had it on my wall. <laughs> oh, by the way, have you just learned how to use, like, filters on Instagram? There's a lot of fucking unnecessary neon filter action happening oh. on your stories lately. <laughs> have you? Did you just learn? Hang on, Nia, I thought you would appreciate it. I love it, but it's very uncharacteristic of Michael Lucas. Did you just learn how to use them? Well, I learned for you. I love it. But I laughed. I'm like, oh, somebody's, I love it. <laughs> somebody's learned filters on Instagram. I can't, okay, I just, boomer. I just want to point out that, like, I think in this one 40-second thing I was shamed for not posting and then shamed for posting. It's a roller coaster, keep up. It is. <laughs> Traditionally, you just send me the content and say post this. Maybe we should go back to that. <laughs> Fucking hell. Plug your I damn thought I show. did pretty good. It was great. Anyway. I just laughed because you've never put a neon triangle on any fucking thing in your no, life. Well, and then I you posted was... about five bedrooms and me and both had neon no, triangles. No, one of them had the sparkling things. <laughs> I chose the neon triangle for you. Literally, who taught you how to use filters on Instagram? It's just there on the thing. It's Why did like... you just start using it this week in 2023 in May? No, I've used them before. Uh-huh. I just haven't used neon triangle. <laughs> Well, I mean, oftentimes, let's just say when it comes to the newsreader I'm posting about Lindy Chamberlain or Russell Street bombing, oh. you don't put the neon triangle on it. God, way to bring the mood down. <laughs> Jesus I mean, really. Christ. Okay, were... go. All right. Five Bedrooms is coming back on Mother's Day on five... Paramount+. Plus. Say, no, Five Bedrooms is back this Sunday. For its fourth season. Currently Paramount. the longest running ongoing drama show in Australia. Amazing. I mean, outside of Neighbours and Home and Away, but yep. they're soaps. And there is also, I have to say, a plethora of Australian drama um, offerings this week. Very unusual. There's like five shows starting in a small space of time. And many of we're going to just isolate the ones that involve our friends. <laughs> yes, my son, Will, is appearing. <laughs> Will McKenna. Not her biological son. Not my biological no, son. That's Harry Styles. But that is correct. No, Will McKenna, who went to high school with Marcella, who started many musicals with Marcella and plays and is, um, you know, a frequent visitor of the Rossiano Barrow household. Oh, I'm claiming him. Yeah. And I say this with you know, no irony whatsoever. He is possibly one of the finest actors and you He's will He's incredible. I know. Like many years ago, like 2016, M said, do you want to come and see Cella's uh, high school production of Footloose and you've got to because the guy playing the Kevin Bacon role is really incredible. And let, let's just say... I, I was like, of course I'll be there. And did I hang up the phone and think, Em's convinced that, like, <laughs> yeah. the guy at the Eltham College yeah. high school production of Wallace. And then I went to see it and it was like, he blitzed, he, he blitzed. blew Kevin Bacon away. Totally. Unbelievable. He went on to star in Harry Potter, the yeah. stage production, and then he's been in all manner of other MTC stage things plays. and everything. And this, he's in, he's in The Messenger, Sunday Nights, ABC, based mm. on the novel. And already there's reviews saying he's the second coming. He it is, is the amazing. second coming. It's terrifying how good he is. He's, I just, yeah, so watch it. Just if you're not for anything but for Will, make sure you watch Five Bedrooms. Yes, which uh, has uh, two episodes directed by one Adrian Chiarella, who I happen to be married to. Oh! He gets very key episodes and there is some tragedy this season and everyone wants the tragic episodes. There is. Also, if you watch the credits very closely, Marcella. You will see. Yes. <laughs> if you look at the cast and think, God, they look like they're in the zone, they're in a good place, they look like they've been just driven to set with such care <laughs> and comfort. That's down to Marcella. Yes. Mar- Russiano Barrow. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then finally, first up, on Thursday night, there's a show called Safe Home on SBS, which is sort of like it's a dark sort of thriller tackling um, domestic violence. And it uh, is stars friend of the pod, Virginia, Virginia Gay, Gay, who wholeheartedly, I ran into her yesterday, considers it to be one of the best things she's ever been involved with yeah. in her life. And it's... it's uh, Three very different offerings we're suggesting. One yes. like Williams is fantasy, five bedrooms is sort of like your your traditional rom comy sort of thing, and then and then safe home is far from that. And it's gritty just, and, and, and gritty. drama, yeah. And, but look, good on you for being the doyen of Australian drama. I mean, self appointed, pop that hat on. I'm the mushroom queen. <laughs> You're the drama queen. I love it. Oh. And we'll be reporting back next week. And you 
I'm going to make you come on a mushroom hunt. You'll get your ex. Oh, I have to confront. I'll get my steps. I need to confront you about something. Oh, shit. I put my Apple Watch on for the first time two days ago for some, it's been about eight weeks. Did you notice? I cannot see. Did you I notice? I have not. But Oh, no. I was there. I was doing workouts and stuff. I got alerted to you completing four workouts on Monday. Do you have an exercise addiction? No, the, it's because they Are count. you cheating? It because it... No, you have to set off a workout. You have to go into your watch and declare a workout. You do, but... I got four notifications. I'm like, this bitch. What? No, no, no. When you, if you walk for 10 minutes, it says, are you going on a walk? And if you clack, it's counted as a workout. Because I was like, four? No. Are you joking no, me? Like, no. do you even have a job? Like Is a, your whole career an elaborate ruse? If I'm walking for more than half an hour, I, can, I count it as an outdoor cheater. walk. No, an outdoor walk is one of the categories. Well, I've been putting my mushroom walks in. Yeah, well, put them in. I have been. <laughs> no, you didn't God. notice because you haven't checked. Well, I'm looking now. I didn't wear it today. Oh. I've got to charge it. <laughs> <laughs> the Apple Watch has been a bit hit and miss for me. The weirdest, this is much like the royal family. <laughs> you started the Apple Watch. You were an evangelist. I yeah. was a skeptic. I mean, yep. I have not converted with the royal family. Can I just say well, Republic into the end? Let's get rid of them. But, wanted to talk but about weirdly, it. I am obsessed with it. I wake up, it's... This is not going to sound sexy, but I wake up every morning and turn to my husband and say, can you show me your sleep graph? <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, who says romance is dead? But also, weirdly, for me... I actually, send this to Adrian. How, how did you feel when your pe- penis fell off? <laughs> mm. Fair. But weirdly, what does it say about me that... Um, Do you want me to answer this? Is this a rhetorical question? Well... I'm an autistic person, so... Well, I feel like you may say, well, this is a trait. Mm. Um, I actually found it's helped my sleep to get all the data on it and everything like that. Weirdly, it means that, like, like if I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, I do a mental calculation. It's like, no, I'm owed another couple of hours. I'll get back to sleep. And then just knowing that makes me go back to sleep. <laughs> it's helped. You've changed my life with this Apple Watch, and I was a naysayer. Anyway, strap it on and let's compare workouts. <sighs> Oh, well, I will. Anytime I'm walking upstairs to the fucking study, I'll turn my walk workout on, <laughs> cheater. All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. It's been a wild old ride. And don't forget to subscribe to Emsolation Extra so that this episode can remain free every Thursday. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Coming up on Emsolation Extra, I sit down with my husband, Scott, for a very frank chat. Do we need to get in the questions now? No. No. Just let me steer the ship, dickhead. So I'm not trying to argue with you because what you've presented is a lot better than what I've presented, which is nothing. I don't think you actually realise how much of my week is dedicated to making sure the house is clean for the four of you. What pisses me off when you do that is not what. Yeah, how. It's how. Every time. It's like, oh, fuck off. You're right there. How are you feeling within your body right now? Um, I don't know. I don't know how to put it into words. To hear the full chat with my husband, Scott, you must be a subscriber to Emsolation Extra. Go to Supercast and search Emsolation for all the details. It's Emsolation Extra. All right, gang, that's it. Ah, oh, feels good. Hope you enjoyed it. A newsletter will go out with all the links to everything Michael and I spoke about. Don't forget to subscribe to Emsolation Extra. Yeah, I'm going to be on you as, as much as I can. <laughs> And I'm not sorry about it, but actually know that I die a little bit on the inside every time I have to talk about it. Have a lovely, wonderful Mother's Day if that applies to you. And if you don't want to acknowledge it, don't. It's totally cool. All right. Have a nice weekend. And um, I'll hear you either Tuesday or Thursday, whichever suits you. Okay. Bye. Like what you heard and want more? m is a totally independent, neurodivergent, female-led podcast which you can help support by subscribing to Emsolation Extra. Get exclusive bonus episodes every Tuesday. Question time with Em and Michael, pre-show meetings, videos of the podcast recording, pre-sale access to live events and discount merch, a weekly newsletter and so much more. Help us by subscribing now or gift a subscription to someone you love at emsolation.supercast.com or get the link via Emsolation Socials. Emsolation with M. Rossiano is recorded at Down the Hill Studios, hosted by M. Rossiano with Michael Lucas. Executive produced by Benjamin Wosley. Produced by M. Rossiano. Edited by Ezekiel Fenn.
Ryan, socials by M. Rossiano, Benjamin Wasley, Lauren Miko, and Marcella Rossiano Barrow, with assistance from Jem Evans and Georgia Watts. Follow us on Instagram at Emsolation Podcast and join other Emsolators at the Emsolation Group on Facebook. The answer is Harry Styles. Please take the time to share this podcast with a friend. Give us a five star rating and make sure you're following us on whatever podcast app you use by hitting the follow button. Thanks for listening and we can't wait to chat with you again soon. Thank you.